Jeffrey Stone. Uh, I'm the Edward H. Levy Distinguished Service Professor of Law at the University of Chicago, um, former dean of the law school, former provost of the university, and my role is to be uh, to teach them how to articulate their own positions and to clarify their own thoughts uh, in a sort of Socratic way in a law school classroom. I just find, to this day, I find this to be just a great high. Um, so the, the very act of teaching to me is, is both intellectually challenging um, but deeply rewarding because you are giving something to these students and they appreciate it. They appreciate it pretty much at the time and certainly later when you see them as alums. And so I, I, I really feel in doing that I'm doing something very valuable. I also fell in love with the intellectual life of a university, um, particularly at Chicago. There is a kind of absolutely no holds barred uh, community uh, culture about questioning one another, um, being pretty fearless about questions and being pretty thick skinned about being questioned. Um, one of my favorite lines about the university um, is that uh, at the University of Chicago, the only appropriate response to even the most withering question is not resentment, but gratitude. And I've always kept that in mind because I think that does capture very much what the intellectual give and take of the university is. And, and I just fell in love with that. I mean, it, to be in a place where uh, everything was on the table. So I'm working on a book called Sexing the Constitution. Um, I got interested in the question of uh, where did, did our views about sex come from? It, it, when I step back and ask, you know, why does our society have certain attitudes about sex and sexuality, uh, which seem to me to be generally odd. Um, I, I was just curious as to where that came from. And so I, th and, and I was interested in the fact that there's been dramatic change constitutionally in issues like abortion and in, in narrowing the obscenity of the doctrine and, and in, in the protection of the rights of gays and lesbians. And, and so I was curious about why didn't the framers think that these types of interests were individual rights that should have been included in the Constitution. And so this was a totally curiosity-driven enterprise. I just wanted to find the answers, and I thought if I found the answers, it might be interesting. And if not, one of the advantages of tenure is you can, you can spend a year or two on a project and say, well, OK, it wasn't a good idea after all. Uh, and so I, I got curious, and I started doing research. And I got driven much further back in time than I expected, all the way back to the Greeks, um, to kind of understand how different societies have thought about um, I suppose it, to the extent people um, are aware of it, uh, that I believe in, uh, in honest, rigorous, clear-eyed thinking to try to figure out the best solution to problems. Um, no one can do that perfectly, of course, but that uh, I always try to push my students to uh, take the other position and to uh, understand the world the way it's perceived by other individuals. And I would, I guess I'd like people to remember me that way as someone who, um, whatever conclusions he reached, he was always trying to figure out how everyone else saw the problem and how it affected.